faults are fundamental structures in sedimentary basins. They're important because they can offset porous high permeability layers such as sandstones and juxtapose them against low permeability tight rocks such as shales, in other words claystones and siltstones. Faults can act as baffles where they are impermeable enough to support the buoyancy pressure differences for the fluids contained in the porous high permeability layers. These fluids can be hydrocarbons, they could be CO2 that's stored in these porous layers, or they could be hydrogen, or even formation waters themselves. Faults may act as partial baffles where they juxtapose the sandstones against the impermeable shales, but there can be cross-fault leakage where the sandstones are juxtaposed against one another. Or faults could have high permeabilities and act as conduits, enhancing cross-fault leakage and up-fault connection of fluids through sedimentary successions. So an early step in understanding the impact of faults in sedimentary basins for fluid flow is to analyse the offset of the stratigraphy across the faults, in other words, the juxtaposition. And in this video, we'll look at two ways of displaying juxtaposition, one in a triangle plot and one in a fault plane map, a so-called Allen diagram. So let's set the scene a little bit further. So here's a fault on a seismic section. Here's an interpretation, which may show sand-rich formations offset by that fault. So let's just take the seismic away and look at what we've done and zoom in. So here we have sands that are still in contact. Here we have a sand that's only marginally in contact. And here we have no contact at all between the sands. They're, they're offset and juxtaposed against the intervening potentially impermeable formations. So lateral fluid migration through these successions will be strongly influenced by the juxtapositions along the fault. So let's look at analysing juxtaposition. Let's set up a stratigraphic column like this with four sandstones labelled one to four, separated by low permeability formations. Put the fault in and increase the offset. So now let's replay that and look at the impact on fluid transmission. And we're going to assume that fluids can be transmitted across the fault and there's no along fault transmission. So here we have the offset and we can see that three fluid pathways are still intact, but the fluid pathway that was operating along sandstone 3 is disrupted. Increase the offset and we can see that another fluid pathway is disrupted, the one through sandstone 4. The one along sandstone 1 is only marginally connected, whereas the one connecting the right-hand side of sandstone 2 can now connect still with sandstone 2, but also across to sandstone 1. In our offset state here, we can see that we've got sandstone 4 connected with sandstone 3, sandstone 2 connected with sandstone 1. So juxtaposition controls the communication of fluids from one formation to another. And it changes as you change the throw. So it is useful to show how stratigraphic juxtaposition can be controlled by throw. And this is easily done with a so-called triangle plot. On this, we plot stratigraphic thickness of the various units up the vertical axis. Along the horizontal axis, we will plot fault throw at the same scale as used for the stratigraphic thicknesses. And we're going to cross plot the stratigraphy against possible throws at this same scale. So let's start by putting in the fixed foot wall across like this. And now we can cross plot the offsets of these formations with throw like this. And these represent variably offset hanging walls, if you will. The overlap of these domains shows juxtaposition. So let's pick this one here, where we have sandstone four juxtaposed against sandstone three. And we can read off the throw at which that occurs, which is around 20 meters on our fault. We can do the same thing here with sandstone 4 juxtaposed against sandstone 2. And we see that occurs when throws are approaching 50 metres. So we have a really useful and really quick tool for illustrating juxtaposition and how they can be predicted with changing throw on a fault 
through this succession. Well, that was a two-dimensional approach. Let's move to three dimensions and fault our succession. So in this particular example, we've pinned our fault in the distance and we've got an increasing throw towards us. So remember, no throw at one end and a larger throw at the other end. And these ways of mapping onto the fault plane is a method developed by Urban Allen in the late 1980s. We're going to plot juxtaposition onto the fault plane. So this is looking onto the fault plane and imagine looking across the fault plane onto where the sandstone beds intersect the fault plane in the fault wall side. Let's just grey out the shale so we just see the sandstones. Okay, now let's put some offset in. So now I've drawn the hanging wall on in that darker orange colour and we've got no throw on the right and a small throw on the left hand side. And let's gradually increase the throw on the left hand side of the diagram. And we can see that the sandstones juxtapose where the colour is more intense. Let's have some more throw. So we can identify new sandstone sandstone contexts that have been created by fault displacement, the juxtapositions. So that's a really useful way of illustrating juxtaposition, the fault plane map. Let's do it again with a more complicated stratigraphy. Again, that's the 2D view. That's the three-dimensional view. And again, we'll have a, a tip line at the far end of our diagram, an increasing throw towards us. So there's the throw. And because our stratigraphy is quite complicated and has got lots of sandstone beds, we'll see we'll generate a complex set of possible juxtapositions. So here's the fault plane view. Looking into the fault wall, just highlight the sandstones on that side of the fault. And this is before throw. Let's put the hanging wall in and add some throw on the left hand side of our diagram. There we go, there's a bit of throw. And we can see where there's juxtaposition created, the grey tone is enhanced. And again, and again, and again. So lots of new juxtapositions, communication between different sandstone beds as a consequence of the throw on the fault. So highly detailed complex stratigraphy can generate complex juxtapositions as the fault slips. These juxtaposition illustrations are very powerful tools, but they're assuming simple fault zone structure. In other words, a single cut through our stratigraphy. And that's how seismic imagery is commonly interpreted with the fault just shown as a single line. Real faults could be much more complicated, but it's hard to image this complexity on seismic sections. Where do we want to put the fault through that zone there? What's the impact of having a more complicated fault zone structure? So again, this is our simple fault zone structure with a single cut. And after displacement, it, you can easily analyse the juxtapositions and hence the possible fluid communications from sandstone to sandstone. For example, that the sand here abuts mud rocks, so potentially is a ceiling structure that can support buoyant fluids on the right hand side. So let's go and see how this stands up against a section through a real fault zone. And we'll go to a really classic one here in Utah. It's the Moab Fault. Let's just add the fault planes on it. And we can see it's not really a fault at all. It's lots of faults. It's a fault zone. And as a consequence, the sandstone juxtapositions are really complicated. And there's continuity that otherwise wouldn't be predicted by having just a single fault in the section. So let's try and trace some fluid movement from right to left. There we go. We can connect right through that sandstone there. Even though it crosses faults, the individual fault strands have got relatively low offsets compared to the thickness of the sandstone bed. Similarly here. So if a fault zone is made of lots of different strands, then there's a greater chance of sand on sand contact and continuity from hanging wall to football. So moving away from this simple illustration, 
the fault zone could be like this, in which case there's lots of sand on sand juxtaposition connecting through, increasing the chance of a cross fault leakage and communication from one side to the other. So that's a quick look at juxtaposition across faults. The next step in understanding how fault zones may impact on fluid migration in sedimentary basins is to populate these juxtapositions with fault properties, the nature of the fault rocks themselves, and then to go on and test predictions of fluid communication and to examine the implications with other data sets. Well, these are topics for other videos, and you can check these out on the Shear Zone channel.